13. I cried out as burning pain roared up my leg, up my side. I grabbed my leg, gasping, trying to squeeze away the pain. The cat jumped to his feet. He arched his back, pulled back his lips in a menacing hiss, prepared to attack again. No! I uttered a sharp cry of protest. Holding my leg, I spun around and frantically hobbled across the wet grass toward the house. The pain didn't fade. It soared up from my wounded leg. My head throbbed. I felt so dizzy, I had to grab the kitchen door frame to keep from falling. In the house, I turned and squinted back across the silvery lawn. The cat hadn't moved. He stood glaring at me with those evil yellow eyes. Hissing, he scraped the paw in the air again and again as if clawing me, as if warning me about what he wanted to do to me. With a shudder, I slammed the back door. Then, holding my leg, I pulled myself up the stairs to the bathroom. The pain had finally faded, but my head still spun. My whole body seemed to pulse and throb. I clicked on the light. Staggered to the sink, grabbed up a handful of tissues to press against the scratch to stop the bleeding. I bent over, lowered the tissue to the wound, and gasped in surprise. It wasn't bleeding. The deep scratch marks were bright white, so bright they appeared to glow. The scratches cut through the skin, but no blood seeped out. No blood at all. I stared at my leg, rubbing my hand over it gently, soothing away the lingering pain. Cuts are supposed to bleed, aren't they? I asked myself. Cuts are always red, never bright white, and they always bleed, don't they? The next morning, my clock radio woke me at 7.30. I sat up and stretched, then I stuck out my injured leg to examine it. Blinking away sleep, I squinted hard at it, rubbed my fingers over it, studied the leg again. To my amazement, the deep white scratch marks had completely vanished. I climbed to my feet, feeling shaky and still tired. I'm a morning person. I usually wake up feeling cheerful and ready to go. But this morning, I felt so tired, as if I hadn't slept at all. And as I dragged myself across the room to get dressed for school, my body seemed to weigh a thousand pounds. Mom? I called, stepping into the kitchen a short while later. She was standing in the middle of the room, twisting her hands behind her, struggling to fasten buns on the back of her blouse. Mom, I have to tell you something, I blurted out, about last night. I stepped up behind her and did the buns for her. A man had to design this blouse, she sat frowning. Only a man will make a blouse that you can't bun yourself. Do you think a man would ever buy a shirt that had the buns down the back? Of course not. Mom, please, I started. She slammed the box of cornflakes on the breakfast table, then hurried to the refrigerator and pulled out a carton of milk. Make yourself some cereal, Allison. Get some juice from the fridge. I'm in a terrible hurry. I'm already late. But I have to tell you something, I protested. She didn't hear me. She hurried out to the hall to get something. When she's in a big rush, she doesn't hear a word anyone says, and Mom is usually in a rush. I went to the cabinet and searched the bottom shelf. Where's Tanner? I called. Left early, with your father, Mom called back. Where's my wallet? Why can't I ever find my wallet? I pulled some things from the cabinet. The kitchen radio was across the room. A news report. Something about a hurricane. I started to eat. Mom stepped back into the kitchen, buying her bomb whip fretfully. I'm retracing my steps, she said. That wallet has to be somewhere. I really have to talk to you. I tried again. There's a big gray cat. Mom disappeared again. Found it! She called from somewhere in the back. I stood at the counter, eating my breakfast. Sunlight poured in from the kitchen window, sending splashes of yellow around the room. The back door was open. I heard children laughing and shouting somewhere down the block. Despite the cheerful day, I still felt tired and gloomy. I couldn't stop thinking about Rip. He's not an ordinary cat. Crystal's frightened words came back to me. You shouldn't have messed with Rip. I swallowed down my breakfast hungrily. Sitting at the counter, I shuddered when I thought of the cat covering my face as I slept. What was he trying to do? Was Rip trying to smother me? I pictured him sailing out the window. 
I remember the heart thud as he went on the ground two stories below. He died. But he didn't die. Mom, I really gotta talk to you, I shouted. Allison, you don't have to shout, she startled me. She was standing a few feet away in the kitchen doorway. Mom, I started, but her eyes were on the counter. Her face filled with alarm. Allison, what on earth are you doing? She cried. What kind of breakfast is that? I looked down and let out a startled cry. Oh no, I don't believe it. I stared in horror at the empty cans on the kitchen counter. I had gobbled down three cans of tuna right from the can.